So we've looked at linear transformations for reflections or stretches or compressions, but we can also find linear transformations for rotations. For instance, if we want to rotate every vector by 90 degrees or negative 45 degrees or any angle theta that we pick, we can use a linear transformation to express that rotation. So the first thing we want to say is that we won't go into too much detail here about how to find these, but when we're in R2 space, so we'll go ahead and say this is for R2 space, our rotation matrix or our transformation matrix that's going to express the rotation for some angle theta, the symbol is theta, we can always use this matrix here. So cosine of theta, negative sine of theta, sine of theta, and cosine of theta. And if we're in R3 space, then we use these three matrices. So this is for R3 space. Again, when we're in R2, a positive angle theta means that we're rotating counterclockwise around the origin, and that rotation around the origin always stays the same. But when we're in R3, we don't necessarily rotate around the origin, we rotate around the x-axis or the y-axis or the z-axis, and that's why we have three different transformation matrices depending on the direction of the rotation. The other thing that we want to say about these rotation transformations is that, like our other linear transformations, they obey a couple of properties. So for instance, if we are rotating through the angle theta, the sum of two vectors, so let's say we have the vector A plus the vector B, so A plus B is going to give us some vector. That's the same thing, that value is the same as the sum of the individual rotations of, of the individual vectors. So the rotation of theta for the vector A plus the rotation about an angle theta for a vector B. And in the same way, we know that if we are rotating for theta, some vector that's multiplied by a scalar, then we can actually move that scalar out in front. And this is the same thing here as the scalar C times the rotation about theta of the vector A. So we can always follow those two properties. And just as a simple example, let's say we want to come up with a transformation matrix that's going to rotate all the vectors in R2 by 90 degrees. If that's the case, then we're saying that theta is 90 degrees. And so to find our transformation matrix that expresses the rotation, we just plug 90 degrees into this transformation matrix here. So we say the rotation for 90 degrees, so the rotation of 90 degrees, is given by this matrix here, cosine of 90 degrees, negative sine of 90 degrees, positive sine of 90 degrees, and cosine of 90 degrees. And so to get these values, we can either use the unit circle. If you study trigonometry, you know about the unit circle, and you can pull these values straight from that diagram, or you can just use a calculator either way. But cosine of 90 degrees is always going to be 0. Sine of 90 degrees is 1, so we get a negative 1 here. Sine of 90 degrees there will give us 1, and cosine of 90 degrees is 0. So this then is the transformation matrix that rotates every vector in R2 90 degrees counterclockwise around the origin. So really we're just using these to come up with the same kind of transformation matrix that we've been using previously. So what we can do now that we have this transformation matrix is say, what if I want to rotate a vector? We'll maybe use the vector 1, 2. I know this transformation matrix is going to rotate at 90 degrees. So if I do the matrix multiplication here, I'm going to get 0 and negative 2, that's a negative 2, and then 1 and 0, that's a positive 1. So the vector 1, 2 rotated 90 degrees should give the vector 2, 1. And if I try to sketch this in coordinate space, so maybe we set up our axes to look something like this, and we'll go ahead and say this is 1 and 2, and then this is negative 1, negative 2, 1, and 2, maybe something like that. If I sketch the vector 1, 2, so here's what that looks like, I'll say, I'll start at the origin and say 1 up to 2, that maybe looks something like this. 
So this is the vector 1, 2. And then if I sketch the vector negative 2, 1, so I come out to negative 2, up to 1, that maybe looks something like that. And so that is negative 2 and 1. And I can see then that these do look like they're about at a 90 degree angle. If I sort of sketch in here an angle that does look like it's about 90 degrees, which confirms that our transformation matrix worked and rotated the vector 1, 2, 90 degrees counterclockwise around the origin in R2 space, which we were able to do using this matrix that gives the rotation for any angle theta in R2.